Now, I have a question for you ladies. Just keep an open mind. Do you think that we should support films created, produced, written, directed by people of color, even if they may not be of a certain caliber? Just to say who you're trying to say. No, <laughs> I will not. We won't name names. I have no specifics in mind, but I mean, honestly, just to ensure that we will get more opportunities. No, yeah. next question. No. <laughs> right. I, I mean, why would we do that? So uh, for, uh, I mean, I, I will call them out. Tyler Perry is, is not um, my biggest, I'm not his biggest fan. Um, you know, and I think that the trope that he, that he brings almost every single time is tired and stereotypical and could use a lot of work. Um, you know, and, and, you know, and I'm specifically talking about the Medea franchise. He absolutely, um, you know, fills the seats. He makes money. He employs lots of people of color on his, you know, on his studio sets. Uh, and, and kudos to him for being a consummate businessman. But it's still about the quality of work. Um, and the breadth of experience of people of color. You know, that, Medea was not my grandmother or my great-grandmother, you know, she, she didn't, as far as I know, she didn't pack a pistol, you know. Um, and so I, I think, um, I don't want to slip into a form of blind support because they're black or because it's a person of color or because it's a woman. Um, I still think it has to be about the quality of work. And if it's not there, uh, then why should we support it and in any in any manner? You know, and, and this goes not just to entertainment. You know, you, if you want to go to a black business, but you know, they run out of chicken at the whatever, you know, or they or you get bad customer <laughs> service, why would you keep going back to that establishment um, when you are not being properly served. And I, I think that's the same question that I would ask um, with respect to some movie types. That, that is a, a, an incredibly valid point. And I also think that you kind of opened the door um, for the discussion on typecasting. You know, often when you do find people of color, they are in very stereotypical roles. You know, we have like the thugged out drug dealer or the very loud, you know, Latina or, you know, the nerdy, uh, socially awkward Asian or, you know, the, the baby mama. Like, why is it that we are, it's so difficult for the people who are creating this content to see us outside of that light? And is there anything that we can do to change that to create more opportunities for, you know, better quality films? I think it depends on who's doing the green lighting. I mean, ultimately, that's what the biggest gun, that's the biggest change is that, you know, television's taking these risks with Empire. It's taking this risk with Jane the Virgin, Fresh Off yes. the Boat, mm -hmm. all those different kinds of types. Are we seeing now a breadth of different kinds of stories? Yes. Um, that risk isn't being taken in Hollywood. Absolutely. You see it more so television, not so much film oh, yeah. yet. Television yeah. is definitely further ahead. Yeah. Do you think that a change will come in film? If so, how soon? I think it will. Um, I don't think we can tell how soon. Um, again, it all comes down to who's at the top of the studio, who's making the decisions to get the content yes. to the world. You know what I'm saying? Because I was when you first asked the question, I was going to say, "Well, that that is something that I could, you know, it falls on the writers and how we're writing the characters." <laughs> um, and, and 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 most writers write what they know. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but also too. I, I, executives you know if they see something and it's not in their box of how it's certain it's supposed to look and it's supposed to be they're gonna be confused and throw it back at you yeah, yeah. You know they'll I mean? give notes to kind of fit stereotypes that they're used to yes. ingesting you I, know mean, I mean even just from my own personal experience I went in to do some on-air sort of reporting and I was told point-blank by one of the casting directors that I didn't look Latina enough thanks for checking my creds I mean, <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah I, that's a really serious issue, uh, and I mean, it, again, it goes back to it has to be checked at all different areas of the industry. I'm never going to be able to watch a movie where, you know, there's a Latina who dyes her hair all sorts of colors um, until there's an executive who can see that, oh, wait, maybe they don't all look like Sofia Vergara. Yeah. Right. I love your hair. But I also want to say I'm concerned with putting the onus on us 
to make the change, right? So what the the premise sort of is, you know, how do people of color, how do marginalized communities make it better um, when, in fact, the onus should remain on Hollywood? Like, not only should we be in the boardrooms when helping to make these decisions about which movies to greenlight and who should star in them and who should tell the stories behind the camera, um, you know, but the unfortunate thing is that the Tyler Perry's and the Spike Lee's and the Ava DuVernay's of the world have had to go outside of Hollywood to get their films made because uh, they were not receiving the support within the system. I mean, you know, Spike Lee has a body of work of, what, nearly 30 years? And he still has to crowdsource films in 2000, you know, in, in the 2014, 15, 16. Why is that? You know, why is it that, um, you know, his work is not respected more within the industry? Clearly, he's bringing money. Clearly, his stories are resonating with everyone, not just people of color, with everyone. Um, so why is he still experiencing um, you know, a, a lack of support from within the industry. And that shouldn't be up to Spike in this example or anyone of color or anyone from a marginalized community to solve. Uh, and, and so that's where, that's where my problem lies. But I, I think that, um, you know, we have to pressure Hollywood to make some changes. So, you know, the Matt Damons of the world, the Brad Pitts of the world who have their own production companies who absolutely could film, you know, could produce films and make films that uh, explore the diversity and, and, and who know people, who know quality actors. So it's not even as if they could say, I don't think they would, but, you know, to say, oh, well, we can't find the people that can tell these stories. They know them. They're within the industry. So why aren't they making more films that represent all of us? And George Clooney, too, because he just spoke out of, of, about Absolutely. diversity and his production company has never like they, produced they, one. They, it's just like, no. I mean, same with Spielberg. Spielberg can't say, oh, I have two black kids and therefore there is no racism in Hollywood. That's not how it works, fam. That's, that's the, you know, I have a black friend, uh, you know, excuse. That's not how that works. So if that's true, you know, let then let's talk about the diversity on you know in your cast and crews when you're making these films Spielberg and what are you going to do next? Don't just right. talk about it, be about it. Yes. Yeah. And, and you're you're just touching on um, the fact that these are power players, yes. people who have the means to make the change. So they we it's not just our community. We all have to be involved, and those are some big people that can do it. Well, thank you so much, ladies. I mean, I've learned a lot, and, and it's been a great discussion. And I have a surprise for you for our next segment. We're going to play a little game. Stay tuned. Thank you so much.